Saul becomes Israel's first king. Reference, 1 Samuel chapter 8-10 Suggested Emphasis We shouldn't try to copy other people. We should follow God and be what He wants us to be. Story Overview Although God warned Israel of the many problems associated with having a king, the people still demanded one. They wanted to be like the nations. Though reluctant. A handsome young man named Saul was anointed as Israel's first king. The people quickly found out that having a king was not as good as they thought it would be. Background Study Samuel had a busy schedule as a judge over Israel. He traveled a circuit year after year and also served in his own town of Ramah, 1 Samuel 7 verses 15-17. Now that he was older, it was time to share some of the heavy workload. Samuel appointed his sons, Joel and Abijah, as judges. Samuel, like Eli before him, failed to see the fault in his own sons. Some have speculated that Samuel, like Eli before him, spent so much time traveling and helping other people that he did not give enough attention to raising their own sons. This may be true or maybe Samuel's sons chose to be ungodly despite a good upbringing. In either case, the leaders of Israel were not happy to let these men lead the country, 1 Samuel 8 verse 5. The people of Israel wanted a king so that they could be like the other nations around them. This upset Samuel. He knew that Israel was the nation of God. It did not need to try to be like the other nations. The Lord told Samuel to do as the people asked, but first to tell them what it would be like to have a king. A king would take their sons and daughters for service to him. He would take the best of everything they owned, crops, cattle, and so on. They would eventually become slaves to the king. Even though Israel had never had a king, the Lord knew all along that they would want one. He had even given them rules and qualifications for a king. Deuteronomy 17 verses 14-20 Saul was completely unaware that he was to be the ruler of Israel. He spent his days watching his father's donkeys. One day, when the donkeys wandered off, Saul went looking for them. Knowing that Samuel was a man of God, Saul and his companion went to ask him if he could use his divine gift to locate the donkeys. Way to introduce the story. Who knows what a king is? Has anyone ever seen a king or queen? Show some coins or notes with the queen's picture or show pictures of other royalty from books or magazines, what do you think it would be like to be a king or queen? What would happen if the king told you to do something? Would you have to do it? Would you have to pay tax money to the king? Israel did not have a king but they started thinking that maybe they should have one. Top. The story. For many years judges had led the people of God. Samuel was a judge over Israel. He was also a priest. He loved God and always tried to do what was right. Samuel tried to teach his sons to be judges but they did not obey God. Samuel's sons tried to cheat the people instead of help them. Some of the people noticed that Samuel was getting old. They did not want Samuel to die and leave his sons to be the leaders of the people. They started wondering what it would be like to have a king. We want a king. We don't want any more judges. All of the nations around us have kings, they told Samuel. We want to be like them. Why don't they want me to be their leader anymore? Samuel thought. Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord told Samuel not to feel bad. It was not that the people did not want Samuel as their leader, they did not want the Lord to be their leader. Still, the Lord told Samuel that he would let the people have their way. Samuel told the people that having a king would not be all good. They would have to pay taxes and some of them would have to be servants. It doesn't matter. We still want a king, the people said. We want to be like the other nations. Meanwhile, in another place, there was a young man named Saul. He was from the tribe of Benjamin and the clan of Matri. His father's name was Kish and Kish owned a lot of donkeys. 
Saul was supposed to be watching after the donkeys, but the donkeys were lost. Saul and his father's servant looked all over the hill country for the donkeys, but they could not find them anywhere. They kept going further and further from home, but they still did not find the donkeys. Finally, Saul told the servant that they had better go back home. Kish would be worried about Saul. I have an idea, said the servant. I heard that Samuel, the man of God, is in the next town. God gives prophets special powers. Maybe he can pray to God and ask him where the donkeys are. So Saul and the servant went to the next town to find Samuel's house. When Saul saw a man walking along the road he asked, Do you know where Samuel's house is? Saul got a big surprise when the man said, Hello, Saul. I am Samuel. Stop worrying about the donkeys. They have been found. You are going to come to my house today and eat a special meal. Tomorrow morning I will tell you everything that is in your heart. Even though they had never met, Samuel already knew who he was and knew his name. And he knew about the donkeys. This really was a man of God. Saul went inside Samuel's house and ate a special meal with him. The next morning they walked outside and Samuel gave Saul a special message from God. Saul, the Lord has chosen you to be the king over all of Israel. Then Samuel did a special thing to show that Saul had been chosen by God. He poured oil on Saul's head. Pouring oil on a person's head to show a special purpose is called anointing. Samuel wanted Saul to understand that God was choosing him to do something very special. If Saul could see God's power then he would know it was true. So Samuel told Saul exactly what would happen for the rest of the day as Saul was traveling. First, when Saul left Samuel's house he would see two men by a famous tomb called, Rachel's tomb. The men would tell Saul that the donkeys had been found and that they were back at Saul's house. Second, when Saul came to a tree called the Great Tree of Tabor he would see three more men. The men would give Saul food. Third, when Saul came to a town in Gibeah he would meet a group of prophets who were playing musical instruments and prophesying about God. Samuel said, When you have seen all of these things I want you to go to Gilgal and wait for me. When Saul started to turn away he knew everything was true. His heart became strong. Saul knew that God had a special purpose for him. Saul left Samuel and began to walk along the road. Everything happened just like Samuel said it would. He met the two men who told him about the donkeys, the three men by the tree gave him food, and he prophesied with the prophets who were playing instruments. So Saul went to Gilgal to wait for Samuel. All the people were waiting for Samuel in Gilgal too because they wanted Samuel to tell them who the new king would be. When he arrived this is how Samuel told them God's choice. First, Samuel showed that the Lord had chosen a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Then, he said that from the tribe of Benjamin, the Lord had chosen the new king from the clan of a man named Matri. From the clan of Matri, the family of Kish was chosen. Finally, all of Kish's sons came forward and Samuel said that the new king would be Kish's son, Saul. Everyone looked around, but, where was Saul? Even Samuel couldn't see Saul anywhere. Finally, Samuel prayed to the Lord again and the Lord told Samuel that Saul, the new king, was hiding behind some baggage. Saul must have been very nervous, but the people thought he looked like a perfect king. He was taller than all of the other men. The people were finally happy. They could have a king of their own. The people began shouting, Long live the king! Saul was the first king of Israel. The people were happy because now they could be like the other nations. The people were happy but Samuel knew that problems would soon come. The people were more worried about being like other nations than following God. How about you? Do you always wish you were like other people? Remember that God is the best example. If we try to be the kind of person that God wants us to be then we will always be happy.